hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Instead of, you want to know something about God? Don't ask them. You seen their report card? They got an E. They got an E in the book of John. What do you mean? They kept saying, I think it's in there somewhere. They weren't studying. To show them, they weren't studying to show themselves approved unto God. A worker that needs not to be ashamed, but can rightly divide the word of truth. They got poor study habits. None of y'all, some Christians have poor study habits. So when it comes time to take the test, <laughs> they flunk. An interesting thing about God, he'll let us repeat the course till we get it right. Here's a little bit of truth about me I'm still trying to make up for. I'm closing. I started high school in 1972. I graduated in 1978. High school's only four years. You do the math. <laughs> Started in 72, graduated class in 78, high school four years. Because I did ninth grade three times. Yeah, she's like. I graduated 78. But you probably started in 74. Correct. All right. So, so rubbing in. But I'm making up for it. I'm getting my master's. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. No, but really, <laughs> but really, I I did ninth grade three times. Not because I was dumb. I just didn't go. I didn't apply myself. But the reality is, they wouldn't let me go to the tenth grade. Imagine that. They wouldn't let me go to tenth grade. I said, "Why well, I got to do ninth grade over?" They said, "Cause you flunked." What do you mean I flunked? You never showed up. You didn't study. You didn't turn in any of the assignments. I'm like, okay, but, you know, let me go to 10th. You're not prepared for 10th. You didn't pass the 9th. Because there's some things in the 9th that you need in order to be successful in the 10th. Unless you're a genius like Malachi, you might end up skipping a grade or two. Y'all ain't listening. Let me come over and say it to Malachi again. Unless you're a genius like Malachi, you might end up skipping a grade or two. Because the... Sharp. But I, I, I had to stay in the ninth grade until I did what I was supposed to do for ninth grade. Then I could go to the tenth. And then when I realized that everybody that was in my grade was younger than I was, then it starts setting in. Hey, I better do something. So I went to day school and night school for a year and a half. I'm getting done with this. And once I get done, I'll never want to see school again. But I lived with this thing about education, and I was always reading, and I said, you know what, I might as well go ahead and go back and get my bachelor's. But I did it in, in, the, in the allotted time, because I went and I applied myself, and I turned in all the assignments. I did what I was supposed to do in the natural. Do you do what you're supposed to do in the spirit, in spiritual school? Y'all do know we're in school, right? Because y'all know how we say, well, you know, God's just working on me. I'm still learning. I know because we're in school. Life is a school. It's called the school of life. And the interesting thing is we can't go to the next grade until we get it right. Hello. We just want God to push us on up there. I said, uh-uh, 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 because no, 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 because I don't want you to make a mess. I want you prepared. Somebody say prepared. I want you prepared to do. And one of the ways I'm going to check is I'm going to give you an exam. Yeah. Now, you call your exams experiences. Mm -hmm. You call your exams test. I don't know why God is testing me. Because he wants to see if you learn the lesson. <laughs> That's why he's testing us. 
Yeah, so, 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 so why does this person keep coming? God, no, God, no, I don't like this person. Why do they keep showing up? I know that none of y'all do that. I know, I know. God, no, I can't stand that person. Why do they keep showing up? They're your test. You know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. So when we are able to release that trespass against us that we hold for that person that just rubs us the wrong way every time we see him, that's an indicator we haven't passed that grade in our lives yet. But then as soon as we pass that grade, it doesn't even matter if they come around anymore because we don't respond to them anymore because we passed the test. I'm on to the next one now. Does this make sense? Our father. I was doing all right until I started talking about that, wasn't I? I'm closing. What Father has done. Last, last verse. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. This is what Father has done. Praise, Paul writes, be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Somebody say, Father has blessed us. This is past tense. This is past tense. Deb trying to tell me I'm getting a little twang in my voice. She said, past, teasing me. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed. Who has blessed. Y'all see that? Has blessed. That's past tense. God has already blessed you. The Father has already blessed you. You are already blessed by the Father. So people say, well, I'm trying to get blessed. I'm trying to get blessed. No, 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 no. You are already blessed. Now, you may be trying to understand how to live in the blessing, but you are already blessed. You already have everything that you need to live an effective life. Just have to study to show yourself approved under God because you're in school. I love it. Who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ? For he, the Father, chose us, that's you and I, in him, that's Christ, before the creation of the world. Father bad, ain't he? God is awesome. God said, I know what I want down there. So I'm going to back up. I know what I want down there. So I'm going to back up to here. And then I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to work towards it. Knowing it's already done. That's good stuff, ain't it? God knew what he wanted. All the way down there. Called it so. Then he backed up. And did everything that he needed to do to get the outcome that he wanted. That's pretty good. Imagine if we did like that. We set the outcome. We know what we want down there. We know what we want. So we're going to back up and then we're going to plan the steps that we need to do to get the outcome that we desire. That's how God works. We're children of God, right? Amen. So we should... We should, that's how we should do our lives. We should, see, we, we should be able to see all the way down the line. Some people call it vision. We should see all the way down the line, see the outcome that we want. Yep, that's it. That's it. Now, I need to back up, keep my eye on where I'm going, and I need to pray and get the steps that I need to get that outcome that I want. Because if I want to go there, there are certain steps I have to take to get there. Instead of just saying, well, I'm just going to walk around and hopefully I'll get somewhere where I want to be. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So, God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. And that's the thing I want to point out. God predestined us, us being humanity, to sonship. God predestined all of humanity for sonship. But it only works for those 
who believe in his name. We good with that? Amen. All right. Predestined us for adoption of sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with the pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace whereby See, I'm reading out of this verse, and I've got the other verse in my mind. I study too much. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, that's Christ. Now, in him, Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. That's what the Father has already done. So you start talking about going to prayer, our Father. We should have all of that. And it's really, somebody saying all of that? Yeah, we should have all of that in our mind when we approach God. God is my Father. I am born of God. God desires for me to be an overcomer. God has already blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He's already given me all things that I need. God has already forgiven all my sin. God has already adopted me into his family. Our Father, that's just starting a prayer. But imagine going to prayer to talk to the Father with that understanding. How would that impact your prayer life? Instead of, I'm going to pray and I hope he get through. Maybe. It depends. I got to go down to the list. I got to go down the checklist and make sure that I, that I ask forgiveness for every single thing that I've done. Because if there's something that I don't ask forgiveness for, it's going to block my channel to God. Now, y'all don't believe that, but there's a lot of people who do. And the Bible says he's already forgiven us. Now, that don't mean just go out and live crazy. You understand what I mean, right? Okay. Okay, Juanita, because I know you. That's my buddy. But we're coming to God, our Father. Wow. God says, come talk to me. Do you know what I've done for you? I've given you everything that you need to be an overcomer. I'll bless you. You have blessing. You have blessing. You don't know anything about. There's stuff I'm getting ready to do for you. It would blow your mind if I told you about it. But we have to talk. Mm. There are some things that I've been trying to do. But you don't believe you deserve it. You know there's things that God wants to do for us that he can't do because we don't believe we deserve it. Because God, because the Father won't force it on us. You ever have anybody come to you in, in, in your life in the natural? It's not your birthday or nothing. And they just want to give you a present. And you feel guilty for accepting it. Well, why are you giving? No, no, I don't want it. No, no, you keep it. No, you keep it. And, and, and we should do that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. You keep it. No, I don't want it. You know, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You keep it. I wonder if, we have, if we've ever done that to God. God shows up in our life trying to give us something. We say, no, no, you keep it. You keep it. I don't want it. You keep it. I don't deserve it. You keep it. Just a thought. Our Father. But, but this, this week, in your time of prayer, think about that. Our Father. And when you go into prayer, ask the Father. Father, bring, bring that back to my remembrance. Those things that that we looked at on Sunday. Bring it back to my remembrance so that it can wash over my mind and over my spirit during this time of prayer so that I can enjoy this time of prayer, fellowship, and communion. Because God, you are my Father. 